one. <laughs> All right. Okay, that yeah, that seems balanced enough. A Universal Interactive Studios production. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone. Uh, it's been quite a while since we've done anything crash related on the channel. Um, literally the last thing, well, not even counting future tense. The last thing I did was the uh, insane trilogy streams. Was like almost two years ago at this point. So yeah, it's been a while. And um, I guess I just call it Harry. Why not? Um, so yeah, this has been a long time coming, and, uh, like, the, un unlike the, um, other Crash games, I do have Scrappy along with me here today, so. Hi, everyone. Yep, so, um, this is gonna be a very interesting experience, because, from what it seems, the both of us have really mixed feelings towards this game, and... I, as I said at the end of the C's run, I do I do kind of need to play through the whole game again to get a full final opinion of it. So this is going to be uh, pretty good for me too, I think. And also I haven't played... played... Hmm? What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say uh, it, it's also just high time we got to another crash thing on the channel, so played I haven't played past the second boss so I need to make my peace with this yeah it's kind of funny how I found out about this game but I'll talk about that when we get past cutscene land it's its head. <laughs> oh. I like how this, like, not explained at all, like, how they got back from, uh, being babies. You five idiots need to come up with one good plan! Or else... How do I do this? The music in the background. Mm. Say, Doctor, haven't you been tinkering with some kind of new secret weapon in your laboratory? I don't know what you're talking about, Entropy. Dr. Cortex, I think he's referring to this super secret mm. weapon you've been laboring over day and night since the last time Crash defeated you. Enough bickering! Do we have a plan? Well, in my scientific endeavors, I've been able to create a genetically advanced super weapon of unbelievable strength. But the power source is the final. That's it! If we release their destructive energy to create enough power to bring my secret weapon to life, we have a weapon capable of crushing mountains, demolishing entire <laughs> cities, and wiping Crash Bandicoot off the face of the earth forever! Get ready to face my wrath, Crash Bandicoot! <laughs> How do you feel about the models in this game? Because a lot of people, uh, like when you compare it, like to compare them to the PS1 games and feel they look kind of weird com in comparison. I'm kind of split. Models would require 10 minutes. Hmm. Masks look better than everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the human character models look kind of weird. They don't look bad, I think, but. Is that when you compare them to the uh, PS1 trilogy, it just looks kind of off. Oh, 
one, all right. It appears that my polar. brother Uka Uka <laughs> Oh yeah, he. Polar Polar is just not here. I'll meet up with you later. Which is really weird because uh, Crash Free at least had him in the uh, cutscenes, even if he wasn't a part of the game itself. You have gotten my attention, Uka Uka. What kind of diabolical scheme do you and Doctor Cortex have planned this time? No scheme, just a more familiar face to the Double Fine Lord. <laughs> no, not the elementals. Uka Uka, why did you release them? <laughs> you know what happened. Oh man, that delivery. <laughs> Also, that's Mark Hamill, by the way. Because, of course, it is. You won't get away with this. <laughs> Who's going to stop us? And while at the Hall of Justice? Yeah. Crash. Coco. Why do you hit these door? I feared. <laughs> Uka, Uka. I also like how the door sound effect was really late. To stop the elemental's destructive nature is to imprison them with the use of ancient crystals. Each elemental can be returned back to their hibernation state with well, a total of five. Kuro, why can't we have we act levels with you in this game? What is the status of the new portal chamber he's been working on? It's almost finished. A few little adjustments here and there, and it'll be ready to go. Well done, Coco. This gives us the ideal opportunity to test it. We must hurry. <laughs> Man. The silhouette, his arms are so weird looking. It looks like a rip from the, just the PS1 model. <laughs> it's pretty cool that uh, Coco makes the warp room in this game though. Wow! See, the cutscenes were the opening cutscenes were longer than I remember. Yeah, this game, uh, the opening goes on for quite a bit. Uh, okay, since these loading times take forever, I can explain my thoughts on the character models. <laughs> <laughs> aside from his wonky arm placement, looks all right. Yeah. Crash is basically, uh, Crash himself anyway, is, is basically just a, a uh, slightly up PS1 model. He's not that much different. Hmm? <laughs> oh, right. oh, I didn't even know. That's kind of funny. Yeah, they didn't really, um... It wasn't until Twin Sanity where they tried, um, I don't want to say remodeling Crash, but like just kind of updating his design slightly, which uh, Twin Sanity might just, uh, it might, it, it, not counting like Insane Trilogy, I guess, it, it would probably be my favorite design of Crash, but I don't know. Uh, that's kind of the fire guy's job, but. As <laughs> I said, Burberry. That would make more sense. 
but yeah, the uh, yeah, as we see, the main enemies are the elementals, and throughout the whole game, you're only going to be fighting um, Crunch, who's going to be using the elementals as like a power source, um, and you will see the characters like Entropy, Dingo Dan, and all and all that in certain levels, but as for bosses, they're not going to be around, which is a little bit disappointing, but I kind of, I kind of like the concept of just one, one uh, character being the boss throughout the whole game and with new tricks every time, but I don't know. We'll, we can talk more about that later, but yeah, cra uh, Crash 4, um, this is, uh, there's, there's probably going to be a lot of comparisons to Crash 3 as we uh, get through the game here, because this is, that's the game that this game takes heavy inspiration from out of all the games um to a fault um honestly because eh, i'm kind of getting ahead of myself here but it's basically just crash free but worse in a lot of respects um and it struggles to have an identity of its own i feel but either way i'll i'll um Say this right now, I don't think the game is bad. Um, I do, as we play, get through here, I, I do have a lot of is issues with it that I'll discuss, but I think the game itself is decent, and I still, I have enough fun playing it. But, um, what's your general experience for Crash 4? It was good in 2002. Okay games outside of the PlayStation. <laughs> uh, did you, uh, so, how, so you got passed to like World 2, right? To World 2, suffered at Water Crunch. Ah, okay. See, uh, that's gonna be interesting, because I, I had so much issues with that on the Seas run. <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I played this game. It's been so long. But... Yeah. I'd like to ask who thought putting 147 crates in the first level of the game was a good idea? Ah, uh, yeah, th this game's pretty notorious for having, like, crazy amounts of crates in the levels. Like, it, later on we go to, like, 200s, I think. Which is... Oh, yeah, and yeah. spoiler alert, there's a death route in this level, so have fun. Yeah. Might as well get it done now. Yeah, alright. But yeah, this um, death route uh, introduces uh, a problem I have with the difficulty, which is mainly to do with the death routes. They don't really know how to make actual pl hard, difficult platforming and just decide to put nitros everywhere and call it a day, which um, is a far cry from what Crash 2 and 3 did, where it actually had uh, challenging enemies and platforming to deal with, whereas this is basically what you'd see in the regular level just with a bunch of nitros everywhere which is not my idea of challenging game design but whatever this one ain't too Forget. bad huh the ski <laughs> <laughs> yeah death warp what about the ski thing Forget. can you yeah can you spin them uh i think i'm not sure and I, if you jump on that mammoth, you actually get a life, but good luck actually aiming that. Uh, screw it, I'll try. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Okay. You can kill the mammoth. It's really precise to do because there's like, you have to land back on a platform. And uh, obviously you'll die if you don't. Uh. But yeah, my, uh, the first time I played this game was kind of interesting because my sister just found a PS2 Crash game and I didn't even know, I, like, I was aware of Twin Sanity obviously, but I had no idea Crash 4, like, Wrath of Cortex even existed, so, um, I, I was, I, I was, like, really interested because it was just like, oh, this is a new Crash game I never heard about, and, um, I, I don't know what it was, like, like, even back then, so something about this game always just felt off to me, like, I think, 
I, I think it's one of those things where, like, when you... Oh, jeez. When, <laughs> when you start um, going for 100%, the game kind of falls... Like, it kind of falls apart. Um, I don't mind the game too much when you're just going to Cortex, but when you actually go to collect everything, there are parts of the game that are more, more of a chore than being fun, if I'll be honest. I don't know how you feel about that, but... I feel a weird sense of uncanny valley-ness about this game, like... Mm. It's so hard to be the other games, but there's like an odd sense of something not feeling right. Yeah. I don't really know what it is. It might be the slightly tweaked physics or the weird coloring in this game. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that a few times in, like, I'm not sure if we talked about it in, like, an LP, but it's definitely been in, like, streams and whatnot where, uh, it, something about the colors just feel muted in this game. It doesn't, they don't feel as lively. It's washed hard out, to, like... Yeah, washed out, yeah, that's a good word to put. Like, honestly, a lot of games, when, tra like, a lot of franchises trans- oh, excuse me. Transitioning from 5th generation to 6th generation kind of lost their color. Yeah. <laughs> and the Crash Dance is dead, by the way, in case yeah. you... Need yeah. More. It's not... I didn't even, like, notice it until, like, I think... It was, like, just when I... Until I actually thought about it, because... Like, it, it's just something you take for granted. But now the uh, Crash just do does, like, a, a crouch jump or whatever, and then that's it. Which is a bit disappointing, but whatever. Crash, the shoot them down. Oh, the so, um... Th this game has a stigma for vehicle levels. Uh, Crash 3 uh, had a decent amount of them as well. But, um... Yeah, this game not only has a decent amount of, like, levels just dedicated to vehicles entirely, but there's also vehicles in platforming levels as well, and, um, I, 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 yeah, it's, an, it's weird, because, um, I, I don't necessarily hate a lot of these, but, um, I am in the camp that thinks there's a bit too many, and they don't always do a good job in balancing platforming levels to the, um, uh, vehicle levels. And I, I, I feel, just... yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? I, f well, I've, I feel like uh, Crash 3 did a, did a better job in balancing the two, and it, it, it doesn't help the fact that, again, platforming levels can also include um, uh, vehicles sometimes too, which just kind of makes things, um, ma like, she, okay, po point is, basically, if you weren't a fan of how vehicle-heavy Crash 3 was, you really won't like this game. <laughs> uh. But, you know. I'll say, though, I recall enjoying this level more than I did any of the play in Crash 3. Mm. I think it helps that this is earlier on, so it, it can afford to just be really easy. Bullet hell. Yeah. I, I will I will attest that um, Mad Bombers was like one of the one of the hardest levels for me as a kid because I just I sucked at those levels like uh, I I mean Bye Bye Blimps um like in hindsight it's not that bad but when when you're a kid and you suck at that kind of play style it, that alone was rough so when you have Mad Bombers which is a lot more Difficult? Uh, yeah, I... I tend to play that level last as a kid, because I just didn't want to bother with it. Alright, we're going for the Reddit time trial now. Yep. I, I can't promise I'll keep doing this, but... Um... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but, um... I can't promise I'll keep doing this, but what I did in Crash 3 uh, was do the time trials for the gimmick stages first. Um, but I might just, it depending on how I feel, I might end up skipping some of the later ones for late for later on. It depends on my mood. 
but Yeah, uh, I, I, in Crash 3, like, if you get all the gold relics, you get a secret gem. I have no idea if there's anything like that in this game. There's not. There isn't? So, isn't no. it isn't? Oh, okay, well, in that case, well, we're just going to be getting the, the, we're going to be getting all the relics, but we won't be going for, like, gold or platinum, because, quite frankly, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so... Yeah, there's not much to say about this thing, but the um, elementals, I like the idea of them, but I gotta say, the cutscenes aren't the greatest. Uh, they kind of come in, they kind of just show up, say like one random thing, then just leave. Um, and I, I feel I feel like the Crash 3 guys just did a better job in feeling like, like a threat that you were building up towards for that warp room, but in this, it's just... It just feels like they're just impeding your progress with a random cutscene, not saying much of worth. I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. I can't tell if that's platinum or sil or sapphire. Platinum. Uh lol. No. Oh. I'm putting too much effort into this. I keep on getting thrown off because it goes to done right after the put the third butter in. Okay, they're loading screen. They're trying to complain about models. Um, <laughs> Cortex's head looks like a tortilla chip. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was fucking nice. Ah, uh, now he gets a, one of the newer elements that was used in this game. Yeah. This one- th this is one of the um, play styles um, uh, that probably will be one of my favorites. The uh, level- some of the level design later in the later ones uh, kind of gets on my nerves sometimes, but the play style itself I think is uh, fun. Yeah, it's a super monkey ball pretty much. There's also an issue um, uh, I I have sometimes the 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 way the color palette is, um, especially in a level like this, it kind of blend the boxes kind of blend in, and then it makes it easy for them to miss, which is kind of annoying. Hey, uh, <laughs> it's pretty That's... funny, huh? What are you saying? I actually do like the design of these of this level though. Yeah. Lush. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, uh, it's got it's kind of funny how a Crash Free had like no ice levels at all, and then we start this game and this, the first level is is a ice level or either way or snow ice level, uh, either or. Um. But yeah, the um, the the issue an issue I have uh, have with the the first warp room is that um, like when you when you look at Crash Free, um, the first warp room introduced like it provided you go in level order, um, you start a regular Crash level like that you um, you're familiar with, and then the second one is an underwater level, which is more or less just an extension on. Uh, the normal platforming levels, it's just a different um, execution. And then the third level is a is a pure is a tiger riding level, which is a is a type of level that's been a staple since the first game, so you're used to it by now. Um, well provided you don't play Crash Free first, but um, and then the fourth level is a platforming level again and the, and then the fifth level is when they start introducing crazy new concepts to you so like they introduce new playstyles at, at a good rate where they aren't they don't feel like you're just suddenly doing something like crazy different and throughout the game I feel they balance out 
new concepts with the um, regular platforming stuff. Um, whereas this game, like you, you do one platforming level and then you're immediately pl uh, piloting a biplane, and then the level after that, you're in this monkey ball thing, and they're they're completely different from like what you're used to from like regular platforming crash from the from the start and it kind of just gets crazier and crazier and it it doesn't really understand how to ease the player in or chill out a little bit it kind of just goes crazy and while i don't dislike I I don't dislike a lot a lot of these playstyles, but I feel there's just a, there's a massive lack of focus in this game. But yeah, I don't know. This is going to provide your way back down. I don't know where these boxes are. It begins. Out of all the crash games, I think this is the one I get I miss boxes in the most because it's again they're so easy to miss. I mean, do you have any any uh, anything to add to anything I said or? I cannot find him. Don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, let's, okay, let's just not die then. And then, uh, like, first warp rooms of Crash 3 and Wrath of Cortex, they. To me, Wrath of Cortex is basically. An exacerbation of all of the flaws of warped. Yeah, yeah, basic, basically. You, like, war I do love warps, like, first, like, selection of first five levels. Yeah. But it does kind of, it does kind of go for kitchens. Hmm. It's, yeah. like, it's fair for the most part, but you do do, yeah, excuse me switch around play styles a lot and for the first five levels like that's true yes wrath of course probably does it even probably even more egregious in that regard but mm. basically the dna is from the previous like the is there in the previous it's, it's, yeah um, i mean that's fair yeah I think that starting with an ice level for your first, I think starting with an ice level is the level of the game is not a good idea. That feels com completely backwards. I mean, it's an okay level, I guess. But, yeah. Yeah, but, um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I. I mean, considering the fact that Crash 3 does have, like, a bunch of vehicle stuff in it, I do think it's partially necessary to introduce at least some of that in the first warp room. Um, and I think they did it in probably the best way they could. Um, again, Crash 4, on the other hand, kind of just... It kind of just... Uh, it does fit, the like, the worst things of uh, Crash 3 and just kind of... O over amplifies them, I guess. I don't know if that's a, if that's the right way to say it, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because again, I don't. I think this level's fine on its own, but yeah. I think there's time boxes up there, but 
Don't want to waste time. So you want to save time, but you're not going to waste time. Okay. Yep. Come on, can we do the trick? I got some galaxy brain level thinking. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. <laughs> uh, in terms of the secondary playstyles, uh, was it, would this be one of your favorites? I'd say so, because hmm. I don't recall being too far to the car. I Is never got far enough to actually use the mech or the dragonfly thing. Uh, the uh, the mech kind of. The, there's one level where the me mech is actually useful, where, where the mech is actually fun to use, and it's when you're not you when when you're you, it's just a regular platform platforming segment. Uh, where's the exit? So take that for what you will. Are you platinum already? 